Bonjour, ça va et bienvenue to today's episode, where I'll be ranking every film by French filmmaker Danny Boone. Now I'm on the record saying that he is the greatest of all time, and if you agree after watching this video, then please check the subscribe button to see if you're subscribed. It's free. Starting off with La Maison du Bonheur, which disappointingly I'm putting in last, sixth place. Boone plays a penny pincher, who decides to surprise his wife with a country house. However, he does things on the cheap, of course, hiring a dubious real estate agent and two bungling workmen who quickly turn his surprise into a nightmare. For his debut film, I think that it falls victim to throwing all of your tricks into one production and only seeing a couple of them stick to the wall. It certainly shows signs of what great comedy is to come later down the line, but the constant unrealistic catastrophe after disaster is quite distracting and boring in places. So in no way is it a masterpiece, but I have seen worse first films and for a one-time viewing, it's an okay laugh. In fifth place, it's La Chti Famille. I actually talked about this film in my What I Watched in January video, where I rated it quite highly. But when you compare it to Boone's other filmography, it's low down in the list because it simply runs out of steam halfway through. The setup draws you in and the ending keeps you laughing throughout the credits, yet it feels like the second act is the padding of a mattress and almost rushing us to get to that final conclusion. As such, I can only remember a few bits and bobs, which were, as always, very funny but not quite for me. In fourth place, it's Rad Dan. I think that's how you pronounce it. This one gains points for having a strong female lead in the form of Joanna Pasquale, the first woman to join the Rad elite French police group. Alongside the most misogynistic agent, Eugene Frossard, played by Boone, the improbable duo must stop the evil gang of leopards without killing each other first. It's interesting to read some of the reviews after the film from men who criticize the main female character for being unwatchable, which is kind of ironic seeing that the film is about the prejudice against women by men in the police force and wider France. If you do decide to watch this film, then I would say put the plot to one side. You don't have to be a genius to guess what the film's ending is going to be. Instead, simply root for the main character, enjoy the explosions, they obviously splashed a load of cash on the visual effects budget, and let yourself smile. In third place, it's Super Chondriac. I've awarded this film a bronze medal because in part it was the first Boone film that I watched, so it holds a special place in my heart. Boone plays Romain Faubert, a hopelessly single medical photographer and a raging hypochondriac. His only friend is his doctor, Dimitri Svenka, who prescribes this bizarre cure of finding himself a partner, which is when I think the film goes surprisingly complex for a Boone film. In comes this foreign freedom fighter who starts a short but sweet dive into immigration-based comedy, but is ultimately there as a deus ex machina to help resolve the conflict in Act 3. I feel like the third character could have had their own spin-off film, but they're shoehorned into the chain of events quite well, giving Super Chondriac a solid bronze medal. In second place winning the silver medal is Rianne à Déclarer, or Nothing to Declare. This film has the holy trinity of comedy. It has the physical, the visual, and the verbal laughs. Set in the 90s during the elimination of the Franco-Belge border, an anti-French and anti-European Belgium customs officer is forced to team up with Frenchman Boone. Benoit Pauvord does a very good job of convincing you that he's super racist, and it was a performance that I quite admired given that British or American films write comedy characters that are implied to be intolerant, rather than outright showing that they are. The film explores how the European Union's vision of a unified Europe might be good in theory, but in practice can be damaging to the local economy of border regions, something that's still so relevant even 10 years later after the film was made, and particularly stinging over here in the UK. I see it as a well-executed commentary on the French and Belgian divide and the fine line between patriotism and racism, but overall, I think that Nothing to Declare is just a less skillful version of Bienvenue chez le Stie. Very little could be improved to make this film, Welcome to the Sticks, a perfect 5 out of 5 film, and grossing over $192 million in the French box office alone. It is without doubt safe to say that this was the best example of the touching, emotional and profound formula Boone has created for his comedies. Welcome to the Sticks is about a French public servant from Provence who's banished to the far north. Strongly prejudiced against his cold and inhospitable place, he leaves his family behind to relocate temporarily, with a firm intent to quickly come back as soon as possible. I've commented on the subtitles including the shtish wordplay before, which really helps you to understand the verbal humour behind it. And with Boone being from the northern regions, I think he's inviting us saying, yes, you can laugh along too at these characters who speak in an unintelligible language, who live in worn-out straw barns and drink all day, every day, playing directly 
on the stereotypes. While the politically incorrect humour of the French might not translate to the British self-deprecation, I quite like to see whether someone could do something similar between London and Leeds, for example, or Surrey versus Scotland, or Woking versus Wales. Out of all of the films that I've talked about today, this is the one that I recommend the most. The gold medal going to be and the new Cherlestie, which shows that Danny Boone is the greatest French filmmaker of all time.